Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 46 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 7. A couple believe that they have brought the wrong baby home from the hospital. The wife is group O, her husband is group B and the child group is O. Could baby be theirs? Okay. So now here again we are given that the blood group of wife is O. That means what would be the genotype? It would be II. The blood group for the husband is given as B. So what are the possible genotypes for this? It can be IB, IB or it can be IBI. These are the two possible genotypes. And the child's blood group is also O. Therefore, the genotype for child would again be II. So we have to find out if a cross happens between this wife and this husband, is it possible to have a child with blood group O? So let us consider both the scenarios. First, we will cross the wife with this genotype. Then we'll cross the wife with this genotype. So let us consider case one. So where we are crossing the wife with a possibility that the husband is homozygous with this. So in this case, what will happen? The wife can contribute this. The husband can give this. So these are the only possible options. So if you look at it, all the options which are possible here would actually give you B blood group, right? So the only possible options, if this is the mother and if this is the father, then the only possible option for the blood group is going to be blood group B, right? But in this case, the baby is blood group O. Right? So, if the husband is homozygous IBIB, in that case, the baby has to be blood group O. So, in that case, this baby is, so in that case, this baby is not theirs. Now, there can be another scenario that the husband is heterozygous. So, in that case, we can cross the wife with the heterozygous husband. This is how it is. So, the wife can contribute II from husband. You can get IB or I. So, in that case, these would be the possible combinations. So, what do you get out of this? It can be IBI, it can be II, it can be IBI or it can be II. So, in that case, there is 50% possibility that the blood group would be O and there is 50% possibility that the blood group can be B. So, in that case, at least you have the possibility that the offspring can have blood group O. So, in this case, the child can be there only if the husband is heterozygous. But if the husband is homozygous, in that case, this child is not theirs. So, this is how we can actually calculate uh, that uh, what sort of blood group can the offsprings have or what sort of uh, blood group will the parents have if we know the blood group of the offspring. Question number 8. In an experiment, a phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 3 is to 1 is to 1 was obtained. In the offspring, on crossing yellow seed tall stem, that is capital Y small y, capital T small t, variety of pea plant with yellow seed dwarf steam variety. Determine the accuracy of this data by Punnett square. Okay. So here what was the cross that was being done? This was capital Y small y, capital T small t and this was crossed with capital Y small y, small t small t. So this was the cross that was being done. So we have to actually find out if we are able to get a phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 3 is to 1 is to 1 or not. So let us, we will we'll use Punnett square but before using Punnett square we should be able to find out the gametes. So what are the possible gametes in this case? So the possible gametes would be capital Y, capital T, capital Y, small t, small y, capital T and small y, small t. So in this case, what are the possible gametes? Capital Y, small t and small y, small t. These are the two unique gametes that are possible here. So now if you try to design the Punnett square, so what do we do? So let us write down all the gametes on the topmost row. So these are the gametes to be written on the topmost row and the other gametes on the leftmost column. So this is what we did. So now we will try to prepare the various combinations. So this will be capital Y small t, 
capital Y, capital T. This will be capital Y, small t, capital Y, small t. This will be capital Y, small t, small y, capital T. This will be capital Y, small t, small y, small t. Here you will get small y, small t and capital Y, capital T. Here you get small y, small t, capital Y, small t. Here you have small y, small t, small y, capital T. And here you have small y, small t, small y, small t. So these are the various possible combinations. Now we have to find out the various phenotypes. So what are the various phenotypes possible? One option could be yellow tall. The other option could be yellow dwarf. So these are the all possible phenotypes. The other option could be green tall. And the last option could be green dwarf. So these are the all possible phenotypes. So let us see how many do we have for each of them. So when we say yellow tall, so how many do we have yellow? For yellow, we want at least one capital Y. For tall, we want at least one capital T. So this is one yellow tall. Again, you have this is one yellow tall because you have one capital Y and one capital T because this is the dominant trait. So yellow is dominant over green. Similarly, tall is dominant over dwarf. So again, here you can have one more here. So three of them are yellow tall. For yellow dwarf, you should have at least one capital Y, but for dwarf, you need two small t's. So here you can see you have capital Y and two small t's. Anywhere else do you have one capital Y but two small t's? So this is one scenario where you have one capital Y and two small t's. Again here also you have one capital Y and two small t's. So this also you have three. Green and tall. So for green you need two small y and for tall you want at least one capital T. So here you have two small y and one capital T. So this is yellow and tall. For green and dwarf you want everything to be small because it is the recessive trait. So this also you have one. So your phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 3 is to 1 is to 1. So this is exactly the same as is given here. So this date phenotypic ratio which is mentioned here is accurate. Question number 9. A black colored cock when bred with a white colored hen produced steel blue colored offspring called andulatium. When the steel blue colored offspring were inbred, black, white and steel blue colored progeny were obtained. This result is genetically explained as, so the first sentence itself tells you what it is. What is this phenomenon called? So what do you have? You have black colored cock. So let us represent black as capital B, capital B. And you cross it with white colored hen. So let us write it like this. So now as per the rule of complete dominance, whichever is dominant should be displayed. But here what is happening? The output is steel blue colored. So that means the output is a different color altogether. So they are all steel blue. So which kind of dominance explains this? Yes, it is incomplete dominance where none of the trait actually dominates the other one but an intermediate phenotype is obtained. So this is called incomplete dominance. Now in the second question it asks what will be the expected ratio of the black, steel, blue and white progeny. Now it is said that this is the F1 generation, right, where steel blue colored offsprings were produced. Now these steel blue colored offsprings were inbred. Inbred means they were asked to breed amongst themselves. So steel blue crossed with steel blue. So that is what was done. So in that case, what happened? So when the steel blue was bred with steel blue, now I think I took the wrong uh, notation. Instead of W, I should have taken small b because that is how we denote it, right? So this would be small b. So here also this is small b, this is also small b. Because I do not want to create any confusion by using different notations. So here what are the possible gametes that can be produced? Capital B, small b. Here what are the possible gametes? Capital B, small b. So now what are the possible options? These are the possible combinations. So what do we get? One option is capital B, capital B. One option is capital B, small b, capital B, small b, or small b, small b. So basically this would be black. This would be white because both are small b's and these two will be steel blue. So this would be steel blue. So if you look at the ratio, the ratio of black or you can write it like this, the ratio of black to steel blue to white would be 1 is to 2 
equals to 1. So this will be the ratio. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.